I can't see you. Uh, yeah, you can't see Lynn and I don't think. No. That's okay. <laughs> okay, the recording is going. Okay. Call this uh, workshop, budget workshop to order for the city of Holiday Island. It's the 19th, I think, of October. 18th. 18th of October. I didn't bring the agenda with me. Let's stand and do the pledge. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Wes, you want to take roll call to make this official? Okay, yes. I didn't break it up. Councilman uh, Member Dumas. Here. Council Member Gray. Here. Council Member Elwood. Here. Council Member Pittman. Here. Council Member Mill. Here. Everyone present. All right. All right. We have a forum to the next up. All right. Uh, we only have one agenda item, and that's to uh, discuss our um, budget for uh, next year. This is just very preliminary discussions. Um, we don't really need to approve the budget until November or December. Um, uh, so I and I did not distribute. Man, I did not bring copies. So I hope everybody either has their own copies or they got them online somewhere. Um, I'm going to start off with the uh, street fund. Uh, based on our most recent financial statements, it looked like we would end up um, this year uh, with a um, balance of about 182 or $183,000 in the street fund. That makes two assumptions that after we take out the $44,000 that were scheduled to pay the city yet this year, and uh, it assumes that we get the full year's um, county, you know, the, our share of the three mill county uh, property tax for roads. The status of that is that um, Justin has been unable to get anyone from the county to return his call. And even though you know he sent the letter about probably about three weeks ago now stating our position, making them aware of the Attorney General's opinion. Um, we thought that we had concurrence from the county that, that they were in agreement. Uh, however, it's been uh, pretty quiet ever since that. We have not received any funds. And um, so Justin was going to follow up with uh, Tony Rogers to uh, try to get a status. Tony has not um, returned his calls for whatever reason. I have talked to, or I've tried to make contact with two different JPs. Um, and I, I don't know if Jack is around. He may not even be around, but uh, I left a message for Jack. He hasn't returned my call. And I talked to um, Chuck Smith. And also, Chuck, Olson. Chuck Olson. I knew that didn't sound right. Chuck Olson, and uh, he said he was going over there next or last week, so he would check and get back with me. But he has not gotten back with me yet. So it's still up in the air yet as to whether or not um, the county feels like they owe us that money. Um, but that's we're still going to pursue it. Is there a possibility of filing some kind of writ of mandamus? Well, that uh, that's not just Justin and I have talked about that. It wouldn't be a writ of um, mandamus or mandamus. Um, Justin had another legal term that he said we would pursue, but um, we certainly didn't want to take it to that point if we could get a response. So, and I and your assumption. Would be how many months of of that county money? 
No, they Christmas collect the year. money from March to October. So that's what you were the end of this month. Get. They're done collecting the tax money. So, um, but they will be collecting delinquent taxes all the way through December. Mm -hmm. um, what about that? That one email you got back from the West where she said that you know we need to make sure you get all you got coming. Pretty much indicated at that point that they acknowledged uh, responsibility. Um, well, I think the, the exact words they used was that we would get everything that they feel we are due. <laughs> That's a little bit. It's a big difference. Yeah, it doesn't mean. It depends on how you interpret it. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's quite evident they're stonewalling us. So, well, I mean, anything. I think it's time to get on the I, floor again. You know, I, I talked, the last time I talked to Justin last Friday, and uh, I told him that we needed to make a decision which way we're going to go by tomorrow night's city council meeting. Mm. They, uh, so hopefully, I'll. They, they've done that along <clears throat> with the district. This is a matter of law, not fact. So there's no jury or anything. It would be a, some kind of directed motion. We don't press the issue. Oh, I'm not, I'm not disagreeing with that. I'm just saying it doesn't need to be a full blown problem. Does the core report meet once a month? Mm -hmm. oh, once, a month. once a month. Once third Friday of the month. That, that would be fun to walk in there on that. That's going to be sure. Well, I, I'm going to no. suggest the mayor go. <laughs> At this you point, the mayor in? Yeah. At this point, I would prefer to go with our. <laughs> Attorney handle it because if it is going to end up being a legal matter, then it's best to uh, let the attorneys handle it. So, uh, now how that impacts this budget here, if you look at the, um, the first of all, let me say that the whole budget is tied into that $300,000 grant project. The uh, timing on that is very un, unclear. I mean, maybe to the point of being difficult or impossible to nail down. Um, the committee that um, awards the grants meets in February. And um, so I would expect to hear in February uh, that we were awarded the grant. <clears throat> After that, it's up to the uh, Department of Transportation basically to execute the project. Um, they, they would have to you know, finalize their engineering specs, put together a bid package, go out for bids, open the bids, select the contractor, determine a uh, start date of uh, actual construction. At some point be before the construction starts, the city has to have has to turn over to the state a hundred percent of all the match, which would be two hundred and fifty thousand dollars, give or take. Um, you know, the give or take depends on what the actual bid comes in at, as compared to the state's estimate. Um, for budget purposes, I uh, I put that payment in there for June. And you can see by the ending balance of the account, based on our anticipated revenue between now and, and that point, um, we would still have a surplus or a, or a balance in the account of $71,000 after paying our $250,000 to the state. Um, however, if we're still in you know, discussion, with the county, and we don't have that eighty-four thousand dollars, then you know we would be in the hole at that point a little bit. Now, we could probably take money out of the general fund, transfer it to the street fund, and we would. Uh, we would. Yeah. You can't take money from the street fund and put it in the general fund, but I have no—I don't know of any restriction that would prevent us 
from taking 15 or 20,000 from the general fund and putting it in the street fund at least temporarily until um, you know until the uh, revenue catches up with the project. Um, I'm still optimistic that the county is going to come up with think they can uh, ignore uh, next year. I mean, I'm, I mean so, yeah, they can't ignore us this year. Well, I know, but their their whole premise is on ignoring it this year is that it's because it was we weren't we weren't a city <clears throat> when it was assessed. That you know, the first response that I got from the tax court, who apparently had tells the treasurer what to distribute. Um, she said, well, we're collecting 2020 taxes now, and you weren't a city. I, I, I don't think there's any uh, problem with assuming that we will get it in 22. No, no, but we need the 84,000 from this year in order to um, make sure that we have the grant money covered, the grant project covered next year. Unless it happens after June, if it happens after June, we haven't okay, got any of either it. way. You haven't put any, you haven't put any of the 2021 county in any of these figures. Yes, it is. It's the, it's carried forward. Is it a carry forward? Yeah, it's mm -hmm. in the 180. Well, there's, there's a uh, beginning balance of 182,082. That includes the 84,000 from the county. Well, we didn't spend anything out of it all year. I would have thought we We're going to spend 44,000. I don't think we ought to do that. No. It's budgeted and it's anticipated. We can't just decide not to do it now. Or why not? We didn't get the funds from the county. No. What was the that? There. What was that going to be spent on? It's a commitment we made in the budget at last year's budget time. To give high SID or what? We were going to give high SID forty four thousand. We didn't give them an No, but we're going to be good to our word. That's what they put. That's what they put in their budget. So. I assume they're probably not getting money from the county now. Can you get anything from the county this year? Okay, so going to the general fund budget. Um, Based on Wes's most recent uh, financial statements, it looked like we would have an ending balance this year in the general fund of about 112,000. Anytime I say something, I'm sure you're more than welcome to, to you know, interrupt. But um, I, I am going to recommend at the end of the year. That we take fifty thousand of that and start building a reserve account because you know the city does need to have some kind of reserves. So if we take fifty thousand out of the ending balance, put it in a restricted reserve fund, um, that would leave us about sixty-two thousand dollars in the uh, you know in the fund for uh, starting out the year and on the um, on the revenue column i highlighted i hope that you have the copies where i highlighted in green and yellow um, what i expected or what i thought was pretty solid what i thought was you know pretty um, a good estimate and then what what um, we need to discuss but based on what we've been getting for sales tax and things like that it would look like I don't know, I this. it would look like we would have annual revenue of 
242 yeah, dollars yeah, $242,000. And uh, under uh, the county sales tax, and then under the uh, Arkansas municipal aid, about, um, what's that number? Well, it would be about 35000 because in essence, it would be the 30685 in municipal aid and then this budget stabilization of 4195 was really an advance payment of municipal aid for the next 12 months. And then it's one twelfth of it is being subtracted from every monthly distribution of municipal aid now going forward. So in essence, we got the forty one ninety five, and it's being subtracted then from our monthly distribution uh, monthly distributions of municipal aid. So the total that we're getting is. 30,685 plus 4,195. Okay. And if they wouldn't have made that a fast distribution, then it's my understanding is we just be getting $400 a month more for the municipal aid because they wouldn't be subtracting the repayment of this advance payment. Okay. So the 4195 that I show is yellow because I didn't know if that was guaranteed or pretty well guaranteed or not. You're saying there's a pretty good number that we can Make pretty that much count on that. The way I look at it, yes. Okay. okay. And then uh, the 2507 and property tax relief, you know, we haven't seen any payments yet in uh, for property tax relief, so I thought that that one was you know, so we actually see a check someday. I don't know but how good that number In the is. past, when we were looking, when I was analyzing past budgets, when we were working on the incorporation, I think there had always been that distribution in December. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, I mean, we're going to leave it in the budget for now. And, um, you know, come <coughs> December, we'll see how rock solid that number is it's not a huge amount of money but um then under um fines and fees uh originally when i started you know trying to put a draft budget together i did put revenue in there for fines and fees the more we started looking at the district court <clears throat> the more it seemed like i was just totally guessing because there's no database that we can look at that says that Holiday Island has a history of generating this much every month in uh, fines and fees based on what the, uh, the tickets that the deputy writes. Um, and, uh, and I'm not, I'm still not sure where all that money goes. You know, somebody pays a hundred dollar to one hundred and twenty five dollar traffic ticket plus court costs. Um, I've heard that the state takes the first seventy five dollars of any fine hmm. because the state pays half of the district judge's salary, and I suppose that that's how they justify keeping that much money. Although the municipal league will maintain that the state is collecting far more in uh, fines and fees than what they're paying back to the cities to operate their district courts. And uh, there's, you know, there's going to be some action taken at some point by the cities, you know, that the city, that the state can't use, you know, traffic tickets as a source of revenue for other state you know, whatever they do with it. So, um, but until all of that clears up, um, I have no idea. Hey, right, you get into the Eureka uh, Springs and so the state didn't show up. Yeah. Well, I think after our visit to Cherokee Village, 
I ain't got a copy of their budget. And when I have looked at that, they had an income item in the general fund for fines and fees and court costs. Yeah, I, I think the city can use that money in the general fund mm -hmm. and then pay their district court costs out of the general fund. Um, but I don't know what's left after the state takes their part and, and stuff like that. Feeling our way through that is a good idea. Yeah, if we if we end up with some revenue, that's just a plus for the budget. Permits is basically going to be building permits and uh, and um, any other kind of licensing or anything that we would come up with. Um, I I got to get I got to get some clarification from uh, from uh, Mickey. I, now they do have a history of what they have been collecting and building permits, and so far the. The building code that I've been putting together that I've been working on pretty much mirrors the current planning commission's fee schedule. So um, I can probably get a better number on that as far as what they've been collecting. Um, but we're probably going to want to year, use like a you know three or five year average or something like that because last year may have been an anomaly as far as. Um, new construction. So when they charge a building fee, that's for new construction or are they charging for remodeling? They have fees for everything. Okay. Oh. If you want to expand your deck, I think it's a hundred bucks. I can't remember. I just did it and I can't remember what it was. It wasn't a whole lot, but I thought it was about an old or Yeah, it is. So, yeah. There, there are some things that, you know, if it's totally internal to the house that they don't get involved in as far as building permits. But um, otherwise, pretty much anything on the outside of the house that you do, they want a building permit. So that may be an overstated number as far as uh, income. Uh, however, if it's substantially less than that, then one would have to wonder you know, how many hours a building inspector is really going to be working in a year because that, you know, that is not an offset to code enforcement. That would be an offset to the building inspector. So when we get down into expenses, uh, well, first of all, anybody got any other ideas about revenue? 50 50 drawings. <laughs> I'm going to get 8.2% in the stock market. <laughs> I think there's probably a lot of good I, 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 would, I would be conservative like you're, you're being, and then we can be happily surprised if we get more than that and, and come up with other things that we feel actually need to be, um, you know, yeah. get money for. And really, there's more surprises on the expense side than there is on the revenue side. Mm -hmm. And it, it's not intended to be critical of my comment, but when I average the pink in county sales tax, it's only 19.8, but you go to 20,005 in the estimate. So, you know, I know you have to estimate something, so it's close enough. Well, and probably, I think I, in my making that calculation, I excluded, I looked at what we had collected monthly, but excluded April because that April would have been based on February sales that okay. was collected. So without April, it's that was, you know, that was during the COVID. Sure. Hot time. Okay. And we don't have the, the November, December spending spree for holidays in there, so that's fine. <coughs> All right, under expenses, um, the ones in green are basically the ones that were pretty much contractually obligated to spend. I don't see that going up nor down. Uh, 
to my comment to one per auditor, there is nothing in there. Um, as I had thought, and I have now been told also, is that if we have legislative audit do our annual audit, there is no fee. If we hire a CPA to do it, then we would pay the CPA. Let's go with the freedom. Hey, uh, when we did that uh, online initially uh, in, uh, in the spring, I think it was, uh, I ended up with a somehow or another, I ended up in the auditor, auditing one, and they, and they said the number one finding they have is the city's over over spending their budget. I, I, I don't know whether they're talking about the total or are you talking, I mean, are they well, talking about item. Yeah. You know, the, the one where we projected the file, right? Is that what they're talking about? Or? What I, I think I've been told is that it depends on how you present your budget when you approve it. If you present a line item budget, then you need to look at line items. If you only present a total budget, then you just look at the total. And I guess ours, our, um, I think our presentation it just showed a total, our resolution just showed a total budget, right. but it was backed up with a, with a spreadsheet. Mm -hmm. all, you know, there was only a spreadsheet. <laughs> Dan, as far as the dues, fees, and licenses, did that include the, um, for the NADA thing too, the Northwest Arkansas Tourism? 2500 No. Is that? That's basically the municipal That's basically the municipal league bill. You know? um, yeah. I think it's about 3700 for, for next year. For next year. Yeah. I don't have that long. And then I think it was like 700 for the dues and right at 3000 for the uh, legal legal part. So maybe I don't know of anything else that that we would need dues, fees, or license for. So maybe there is enough in there to cover the five hundred. But in, in direct answer to your question, I was not thinking of that when I when I put this in there. So I think but you said it's twenty five hundred, right? Yeah. Twenty-five hundred. Well, then, then I know I wasn't thinking about it. So, yeah. so should we make line twenty-five to dues and licenses seven thousand? Like the five hundred in there to the whatever the economic development group. I probably this year I put that in the dues fees and licenses. Okay. I'm going to make a note here. Let's see what when, when we get done here, what uh, yeah. what we think we can afford. The uh, the legal there, other than district court, mm -hmm. is um, basically whatever we would pay Justin to do his thing. But I think that five thousand is a safe number. We haven't used them. Very much yet, but then um, it wouldn't take long to spend five thousand. So, what do we do if we get into a situation mid year, let's say, uh, an, an, well, sort of unexpected, and somebody does a Cherokee Village lawsuit on us, for instance, suing us and High said? How do we pay for that? How do we pay the legal expenses? Does that go back to the municipal league? Municipal league. Municipal league. They've already should turn. Yeah. 
Um, and they pay. We would, if there's a lawsuit, we pay them three thousand mm -hmm. dollars, right? And then they defend. Now, if we, oh, we have to pay them three thousand in this budget, though, don't we? I mean, it's not at the time it happens. That's is it? for the our share of the dues to be part of that group. Okay. I think that would be. I'm thinking an additional payment if there's a lawsuit. Hmm. I would think it would work work kind of like an insurance policy where you pay it regardless, and they use other people's money to help fund their attorney mm -hmm. to help us, but I don't, think you can I don't know how it works. I but I thought that $3,000 was sent out as a specific item. You either and these dues are based on our population. Right, right. I think, yeah. I you think want to follow up and double check on yeah. that? Just to Let's do that. Sure that. I don't think you can budget it. Whether you need a lawsuit or not. Sure you can. If, our, if sure. we would have our attorney also assist in defending us, that would be additional. Mm -hmm. We'd have to pay our attorney ourselves. Mm -hmm. Which is why we needed a reserve. That's why I wanted to set up a reserve right up front. Good idea. But that is a good question. You know, is, is, is the $3,000 deductible basically, mm -hmm. uh, is, is that in our dues? Are we paying the deductible ahead of time? No, no, or, no, we, no, so. or is that just for no, the Oh, if it's a deductible, yeah, that would be a different story. Yeah. yeah. But I, 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 I think we need to get this settled before we go into the budget. I know if you if you have a settlement, <laughs> Okay. Um, the, you know, the rent is basically baked in the uh, information technology that's basically baked in. Um, and did you get the numbers from Wes over what we're paying today? I looked at the bills that, for instance, the last bill that I just got because I was concerned about that. And it Actually, we have, I think, a little bit more like $20 a month more in the budget than what we got billed this time. Our bill was like the 450 for the IT support, mm -hmm. 149 for the disaster recovery, uh, the cloud managed security service 30 for Microsoft 365. That must have been $10 for two users. So, and we've got the internet and the phone in there. So, I think, and the website. So, I think we're still okay. Uh, one thing you might want to consider is if we get another PC for the planning commission or the um, what the code enforcer or something mm -hmm. like that, we're going to have uh, some additional costs. Down in the bottom is a planning and zoning. He's got 6,000. Oh, you did put it in there? There's a number there. Okay. I didn't put it there. Okay. We just need to consider that. Yeah. Code enforcement, uh, slash building inspector, uh, expense. Uh, is that person going to be expected to use his own vehicle or we want to make mileage to him? Or how is that? Um, I believe I put um, that's under the department expense. 
code enforcement. Um, okay. I believe that I made an estimate on how many miles he'd have to drive, and he would be using his own vehicle. I think I used the IRS allowance for mileage. His um, seven number. I can provide you more detail on that. No, I just want to make sure we didn't have I don't know if that takes that. I still think we ought to try to do that. Under the district court and fire department. That, that total is out of the turn one six. Is that what other cities are side of the thing? It's all over the map. Um, from anywhere from 15,000 to a for part time to I think Eureka Springs had the highest paid one of anybody that I saw at 54000 or something like that. So um, it's, it's kind of an average that, that I came up with. Now, I did combine the code enforcement officer and the building inspector. Um, at this point, I'm pretty confident that the two together is not more than one full-time job. I don't really see um, where, of course, I mean, code enforcement it all depends on how much you want to do. You can, you can be out there hunting for violations eight hours a day and racking up, you know, 100,000 miles on a vehicle, um, or you can sit in the office and wait for the phone to ring for a complaint to come in or something like that, or you can prioritize known violations, and that's kind of the approach I would take, you know. It also depends what we decide the code is going to be. Mm -hmm. True. And the fines and fees. Fifteen or twenty a year. Once you start, once you start tracking down, you see. There's, you know, I've I've done some driving around uh, based on complaints that calls that I've had and stuff. And there's three places I know of right now that are dump sites and they're they're residences. But their yard is a dump site and uh, they need to be addressed. And there's a couple of properties that um, are that, that would not meet anybody's code or standard for being properly maintained buildings, you know, rotting siding and uh, rooms falling in and things like that that are probably need to be addressed. Um, you know, if we don't start, you know, if we don't start chasing down, you know, people that might have something in their front yard that, you know, the neighbors don't think belongs there or something like that. And I think <coughs> there was a post today about an RV park on vacant lot there on Holiday Island Drive. Mm. RV park. There's one in the 50 to 70 lot or street number area. Almost across the bar. Yeah, it's, it's, it's right on the... Oh, It's on the... Ninth there, hole. It's on the ninth hole. They've been there for two or three years. Yeah. They also had a boat there that they parked next to it. It's a it's a fairly nice house. It's just got an RV next to it. Yeah, but people are renting it. Yeah, you know, it's renters. I think it's an estimate. I mean, I, I really do think once we start enforcing it, it's so high that they're not going to do a, a lot to repeat. Well, I'll tell you, if we adopt the code, you know what Dan has put forth for us to review, maybe tomorrow. I mean, some of those fines, a hundred dollars a day, and each day thereafter, as long as they continue to keep the violation out there, 
if you know until they clean it up, a hundred dollars a day can get pretty expensive. Yeah, none of those fines ever stand up like that, so they always get adjusted down. But um, to your point, Jerry, um, I don't think that parking an RV next to your garage is going to be against the city ordinance. I don't know. Of, I don't know of. Uh, I mean, how the that code would say you can't put a, a, a tin building on your property. You can't build a metal structure. I mean, that's all that a fifth wheel is. I mean, on the main drag coming into town. Well, we could probably regulate that you can't live in it, but we can't. I don't think we can regulate that you can't park it there. The only, from what I've read, the only thing we can regulate is uh, creating a safety hazard for line of sight. Mm -hmm. So if someone did that on a corner lot, would create a line of sight issue around the corner. But other than that, I don't think we can either. It might be in the covenant, but I don't think the city has that authority. That would affect safety, security. Health and welfare. Yeah, health and welfare. Welfare can be a kind of a, the general well-being of the you know, the taxpayers can be a kind of a big umbrella, but um, I, I, I think, you know, we, we're just guessing. And I, and I, I, well, I'll put it this way, I haven't seen it in any other, any, in any um, municipal code that I've scanned. No, but I mean, can't park an RV or a boat in your yard. Yeah, we're gonna have it. If they're letting the weeds grow up around it, it might be harboring snakes and Yes. Um, I have had an inquiry from a person who has a rental in another state, a house that's a long-term rental, it's not a vacation long -term. rental, and they got a notice from that state about registering the rent. Oh. And said if you do it before the 1st of January, it would be, there would not be a charge for this year, but it sounded like there's going to be annual rental or annual registration fees on rentals. They may be calling and it I'm a commercial business. That might be leading to periodic inspections. Mm -hmm. Might. Uh, speaking of uh, rentals, I don't know if you saw the thing on next door a week or two ago about the, the big house on uh, uh, Lake Shore. Lake Ta Ta Terry Boucher's photo. Yeah, Terry Boucher. I can't remember his name, but, uh, <laughs> part of that discussion was kind of disturbing that that guy saying that he pays somebody three hundred and seventeen dollars in tax. For that and he's and he, he insinuated he was paying it to Holiday Island when he's not. So, I mean, that, <clears throat> the VRBO side, I think, is charging the sales tax and it's going to, your, to Eureka. That could yeah. be it because of zip code problem. And he may not know any better than to challenge it. So, Eureka is getting all the VRBO sales tax that's happening in Holiday Island. How do we remedy that? We have to fix the zip code problem so that it is primary assigned to Holiday Island so that retailers know who to send the second stacks to. Now, you look in the U.S. Postal Service, 72631 is a secondary assignment to the primary of Eureka Springs. And we have to be the primary name. And so all we need to do is petition and see what it's gonna to take to make us the primary rather than the secondary name. Well, I, I just popped in my mind the reason I think that's a reason to get that done. But on these on the speed test that we, when you type in the zip code, it shows your street address is Eureka Springs. Right. You can't override that. Right. So right. I mean I don't know if a lot of people did that or picked that up. I tried, but it wouldn't it did. It allowed me to do Holiday Island. Uh, yeah, I put it in Holiday it. Island uh, Said, please enter a valid address. No, it didn't, it didn't happen online. All right, well, that's a side issue to the budget discussion. If somebody wants to take on uh, 
checking with the post office as to how to get that corrected from a bill uh, I, I don't know, I read something a year, some time back, uh, where uh, Womack's office was involved in trying to get the zip code changed. I had contact with down. Oh, really? And, uh, and they, and they, it took them Good. quite a while. Uh, I, I contribute to all that. I can call him and talk to him and see. Well, don't you? And if he's got experience with Tottingtown, it'll make it faster for us to get our wish come true. And just to finish the conversation, if it gets switched to the primary at Hall Island, these rentals prices will go down because we have a zero sales tax. So we'll gain nothing just no. by switching it no, they until still we have, they put a sales tax they on. Still have to pay the seven percent state. Right, but it's not city sales tax. No, it'll be just seven percent state well. And I think there's a, a two percent state tax on rentals, yeah. on rentals yeah. too. On hotel rentals. Mm -hmm. I know we talked about not imposing any taxes or asking, but I mean a very easy one to get passed is a hotel motel. It's true. I mean, and any, don't pay that. And if we call it that, any revenue goes to one of two accounts. It goes to Parks Department or to the Advertising Commission. That's the only place we can spend that revenue. Yeah. So well, we can't we, use it for general fund for other things. But it would be nice to have that money to spend. Sure. We could pay our Northwest Arkansas tourism bill. <laughs> nothing else. Yeah. If, we have a plan, if we have a commission. And maybe a little advertising, too. Yeah. So the first step is deciding how much of that we're going to allow in our ordinances yeah. because you know, technically most of those VRBOs probably shouldn't be operating because you know, they're running a business in a far more residential. So that's going to be a real popular uh, subject coming up. And I think that also gets back to this question about having extra security, having a second deputy because of the big RBOs, and there is no resident living in those properties currently, so we are getting no revenue back. As far as state turn back funds, right. county sales tax, well, we may indirectly, because if you read the logic that AGIS applies, they count the houses and assume there's a population in them. When they're looking at sections of our city that don't have a complete unit in it, they divide it up and say it's a partial unit. They're counting houses. So but, okay. maybe indirectly are, we are getting a population. On some, on some, maybe. But I think he's talking about the taxes use the census numbers. Not right, that's, on, that's yeah. what I'm saying. When they did the census estimate, they use that logic oh, when they, if this territory is saying. split, they say, well, there's 19 houses in the piece that is not, and there's 11 houses around, so we So it's still an estimate. Yeah, on those border sections of our communities. They, so. they make a reasonable effort to find somebody at home there, but if they can't, then they, like Lynn said, they, they have this rule that they use. Maybe that's why our census uh, number went up. I don't think we got time <laughs> Uh, anyway, from a from a uh, budgeting standpoint, I'm budgeting fifty thousand seven hundred eighty-two dollars to cover the total expense of code enforcement and building inspection, which is probably you know the bare bones minimum of what we can get away with. And I just thought, is there any liability insurance that we could carry additionally because we have an employee on the street? I thought about that, but not from a budget. You mean standard. driving around? Well, to have liability. You know, yeah. he's an employee. Yeah. I, I participated in a court case where somebody's employee had an accident and they sued not only the guy driving, but the employer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. Good point. Or worse, I mean, the, the guy has an independent one car accident. <clears throat> and, well, uh, this was in Oklahoma and Louisiana, but at, at newspapers, uh, independent contractor carriers, we required them to have liability insurance 
and included that in any mileage or table. Okay. So that might be a way around that. Okay. And then the vendors that we had in the last company, we required that they named us or the company as a as a uh, co whatever co coverage. So if something happened with what they did, we were covered. That's right. That's routine. They right. Add that to the VA policy. Okay. The thought that I had I was I that in the Marine Corps, you do that with the co. I just had to provide a copy of my insurance. I didn't have to name the marina. I didn't have to have an add-on. Well, that sounds particularly effective if we're going to be asking them to use their own vehicle and paying a mileage yeah. reimbursement. If, if they have their own vehicle, you have to make sure because your personal auto policy isn't going to cover that type of thing. Your vicarious liability, obviously, is. Uh, yeah, um, and we may have to carry this once a year to provide proof of that they're going to reduce that insurance. They've got a, got a business auto policy that you have to add. Just to write the certificate. Uh, as an additional insurer. Yeah. Are you um, talking about independent contractors and things like that? You're talking about us uh, not having an employee for COVID. Well, no, I'm just saying that to address the insurance, you could do that with an employee as well because they're required to use their own car. Well, you're, well, we're talking about two different things. If you're talking about an auto thing, or if you're talking about some other type of liability. I'm talking about, like do we general. have additional liability having the employee on the road, was my question. And if so, do we yeah, need to carry the insurance? You would, but, you can, but as far as, there's, I mean, there's going to be a couple of different, you got an auto exposure, but right. then you may have some other exposure However, limited, but I thought the other exposure would be more of a general liability thing. And I thought the municipal leave that's part of the coverage that they would give us, not the auto part, but some kind of vicarious liability out of errors and emissions or physically hurting somebody. Mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. that, 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 those are two different exposures. Be bonded? Hmm? Required to be well, bonded? I think statutory immunity also comes in. Yes, that's true too. And our employees, you know, are essentially immune, statutorily immune. Because I had the question, I think there is a law that says that elected officials are not employees. So the question came up about myself. And so I talked to Lanny last week, and I because it's time to file big quarterly payroll tax returns. And I said, well, Lanny, I said, I am an elected official, so, and I have been taken out of Social Security tax, but I said, so should I be treated as an employee or could I be an independent contractor? And first he said, well, there's one law that says you're not an employee and nine others that say that you are, including the IRS. Welcome to the law. And I yeah, said, well. um, what about statutory immunity? How would this affect that? And he said it does not. What you're talking about. I'm talking about, you know, so he's saying there's no but you're talking difference about error between, type thing. We're talking about a physical. You have an accident. Right, if you have an accident. But I, what he is saying is, I would interpret then that independent contractors, say doing certain things, might also have statutory immunity. Um, anyway, I just raised it as an issue because I don't see anything on here for insurance other than work comp. It's a good question, though, Wes. Mm -hmm. You you can darn well bet it. One of them has an accident, they're going to come back to the city. Sure, because you know. we have deeper pockets. Yeah. <laughs> At least they think we do. I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it's still, it's still, you got to separate those exposures because, right, as, as far as municipal immunity is extremely strong in Arkansas. Okay. But an auto accident is a different type of crit. That's easy to solve because we just ask them to get a business auto policy. And endorses as an additional insurer for whatever. Do we pay for it though? No, he pays for it. The the employee or the part timer. Well, the person or... who buys the policy pays for it. 
it's not very expensive. A business auto policy might be, but an additional insured endorsement is not very expensive. But why would he get a business insurance policy if because he didn't need it other insurance. than working for us part-time? Because a personal auto policy isn't going to cover him if he has an accident in the open course of employment. Okay. Mm -hmm. What if he's not in employment for the independent contract? It doesn't matter. It doesn't it's matter. still a commercial use of an automobile as opposed to a personal use of an automobile. Okay. I bet a lot of people don't know that, Pat. They'll find out the hard way. Yeah, right. That's usually when people find out those things. They need to read the policy. Which so, I'm probably the only person that's ever actually done. Oh, sure. So for, for budgeting, what would we budget if we were to cover that expense for this this person? I have no idea what it would cost. Okay. It's gonna depend on all the other factors. I mean I would just driving say record not underwriting. Okay. But still, what kind of vehicle he has, how many miles he drives. It's, it's going to be more than a personal auto policy for the same exposure, but not. I, I still Excuse start me. out talking to the uh, municipal. They do have an auto policy program. I don't know what it costs because other mm. other cities obviously have more exposures than we do. Mm -hmm. how, how much are we budgeting uh, for mileage? What's the IRS? That's a tool. That'd be 56 cents. Yeah. Wow. I thought I saw something there. It was 22 cents. Last I, was, last I was paid, it was 34 cents. But it's a couple of no, five years I, more now. I think it's like 50 cents. 50 it's 50 cents. cents. So one's 58 and one down, I'm sure. No, it's going back up, though. Yeah. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> Say normally the 56 cents includes insurance, that, yeah, includes all cool. your auto costs. Yeah. Now, if they have to have a business policy or something, you know, maybe at an added cost, we'd have to consider that. You pay in mileage, you're covering their costs. That's mm -hmm. I, I, yeah. It's been a long time since I looked at the business out, and they're not. The one vehicle, they're not hugely more expensive, but depending on what the what you're doing. We're not talking about a truck driver, we're talking about a personal auto being used for temporary or partially for business use. So it's not it's not a huge exposure compared to like a semi truck or something. Well, I don't really know. Okay. That's not really what I do. Yeah. I've made a note to to check into that here. Um, but there's there's other things that need to be um, uh, defined before we hire an employee. Um, whether you have one employee or a thousand employees, you need to have personnel policies that keep you legal and uh, so that the employee knows where they stand. What's the vacation policy? What's the attendance policy? Um, you know, what, how do they get sick leave? Um, I just happened. Uh, yeah. I just happened to attend the HR five-hour course last week. Were you certified? <laughs> not well, not yet, but <laughs> no. I just they were talking about that kind of stuff. They have pretty much everything canned. That right. we can just take right. and fill the need to, yeah. We need to have an harassment policy. If, oh, yeah. If the mayor sexually harassed the employees out of the plane, and they call his wife, <laughs> and it's fixed. And the bank contractor probably would be a better idea. That doesn't give us absolute immunity from everything, but it makes it easier. It makes it a lot simpler. It does. I, I don't disagree with that. I just can we get that? Uh, well, we don't know if we can hire anybody. That's true too. Uh, 
Are we going to put your daughter on retainer? Are we going to put your daughter on retainer? To come up with these policies? No, to be our, our go-to person should we have a question. Uh, <laughs> okay, so there's, there's a lot of work to do before we hire somebody, before we specifically hire When somebody. do you think we're, what's the time frame for hiring somebody? First of the year? Probably. Yeah, finding somebody first. Is yeah. Maybe. District Court. Um, well, I gotta refresh my memory on District Court. The um, we're still planning on um, being uh, being set up as a OJI not a department of the third judicial district if we were a department of the third judicial district we would have to pay one eighth of the judge's salary if we're an oji we just have to negotiate an agreement with eureka springs that we um, that we prorate we will pay a prorated share of the judge's salary of, of eureka springs Expense for judges' salary. We will pay a prorated share of the clerk's expense and courtroom expense. Um, we and um, and we will be asking Eureka Springs to provide security during the uh, you know, when when courts in session. They'll have a city cop there anyway, so. Um, doesn't pay for us to try to have the deputy over there. We will have to pay, of course, that prorated share, which is based on the number of cases. And um, and and I'm a little unclear as to how that works. Originally, I thought it was the number of cases uh, between Holiday Island and Eureka Springs. In other words number of cases going through the Eureka Springs District Court. But uh, in another reading of the law, it seemed like it was a prorated share of all the cases in the third judicial district. So I had to get clarification on that. And I did ask Justin to draw up a um, an agreement for us to approve and then take to um, Butchberry and uh, have them seek approval on their end. We will have to have our own prosecuting attorney. And uh, I talked to Tim Weaver, who prosecutes all the cases for Eureka Springs. He was prosecuting the cases for Unsell as well, but they've gone in different directions. So he's got, he's more than eager to work with us on prosecuting our case for, cases for it. He said he charges a small retainer, $100, a small stipend of $100 an hour. And he said that, you know, if we only have, you know, six or 10 cases a month, that would, wouldn't be more than, um, you know, a couple hours worth a month for him. So a couple hundred dollars a month. So um, not really knowing here again, we're going into this kind of figuring it out as we go, not knowing where our, what our prorated share of the uh, uh, Eureka Springs District Court cost is going to be, having a pretty good idea what the, what the pressing and attorney cost is going to be. I put in, um, da, 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 or $10,000. $10, it's just a number that I pulled out of the air. It could be a lot less than that. It could be more. I don't know. The other thing, though, is it says that that's not payable until February of next year. Right. So, but um, you'd be well to try and include it in the budget. Well, if it's due in February of next year, we pretty much have to approve for it. 
and you know, so the money is there. Now we'll recognize the expense this year and put it in an approval. <laughs> right, Wes? So yeah. that the money is there next year. Well, if the liability we're incurring in 2022, oh, yeah, so you we should approve it. Approve for that liability. Yeah, I would say normally, if we're just strict like cash receipts on a cash basis, it'll, just, it'll be shown why we pay it. But we can carry over the ten thousand to twenty three, right? We can carry the balance okay. forward. All right. And it would have to then if you pay it in the next year, it's gotta be a budget of expense sure. when you pay it. Uh, yep. the only thing is, you know, we should give you know, as we go along, we should get an idea of where we're gonna end up. Right that it should be but you know, it should be based on the actual number of cases that we have. We'll have to talk about that. But you know, I think what you're talking about probably is what's called encumbrance accounting and cities normally don't do that. Your cash basis and then you record expenses when you pay them that don't accrue on them. Well, the only thing is uh, we wouldn't have enough revenue. January of next year to pay that. So we're kind of just like, um, we're just kind of couching. <laughs> it's a concept I'm not comfortable with that uh, we are we are incurring a liability and we're not, we're going to go, we're going to end the year without recognizing that liability is hanging out there. Right. It's not an expense, therefore. Mm -hmm. So, so next year's budget would have twenty thousand in it because we're going to put the no, ten that we that no, we didn't spend. No, next year's be the. Five. I'm talking about twenty four. In twenty four, it'd have twenty thousand instead of ten. No, and in February, no, we'd spend no, ten thousand of it because you wouldn't spend twenty. Yeah. Oh, right. I see what you're saying. We wouldn't spend it until twenty five. You're, right. you're, you're behind. behind. Okay. You're behind. So. Okay. My my problem with doing it that way is. That you know, right now it may be one line item in one account right. that we have to remember. We got a bill coming due in February of ten grand, ten thousand dollars, or something like that. Uh, if I, you approve for it, you don't have to worry about it. The money is there. Well, if that's you, what I'm accustomed to. If you put it in the budget, you're not going to spend it. You don't have to put another little pot. All you're doing is if you haven't paid it, the money's the money be is there. there. Yeah. So are you saying cities don't have balance sheets with current assets and current liabilities? You could you could accrue it if you wanted to. It's a prepaid expense. That's pretty weird. That doesn't sound right. I mean, if, if you take on a road project, you don't pay for it till the end. You have a liability that you agreed to pay. Just have, like this $44,000 is a liability for us. We've agreed to pay it. Do you have accounts payable? It's not an account. No, not. no, I don't. You know, I have, it's been 10 years since I worked on city audits. Hmm. And there are, have been some changes, but I, you know, no, you're just accounting for cash. If you if you put it in the budget, if you follow your budget, the money will be there at the end of the year. Mm -hmm. Even though it's not an expense, uh, there may be some way you could incur a lack, accrue a liability, but you really don't know what it is. So I, I would. How about if we write a check every month to an account that's called district court? So there's a there's a bank account for district court and it has cash in it. We don't need there would be a reserve. So we have the ten thousand dollars in February, Ken. We will if you put it in the budget, you follow the budget, it's gonna be there. Mm -hmm. 
that I, I don't disagree with that statement. Um, but you gotta follow the budget. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, but, you know, the, you, you can't want... just look at your ending balance and say, well, we can afford to overspend on the fire department because because there's ten thousand. Because we got all that money sitting there, right? And forget about the fact that you got a bill coming due in February. And to me, you know, we have a simple enough budget to probably be able to remember all that. I can't imagine running New York City that way. Well, or Fayetteville. <laughs> uh, we don't have to be real simple. You, you ask County Town and see what they did, how they took care of the people who didn't have to pay. I bet you they didn't they put it. They didn't put it in another little bucket. That's well, if you if you want to segregate the cash, you can do that. Put it in a separate cash account. So why? So it's not on the bottom line. Mm -hmm. So someone doesn't say you've got an extra ten grand there. You can buy those park benches, or you can fix that pothole. All these other ones, you know, are the same one. All your other accounts are the same. So they're going to be, you know, you're not going to pay this money. Uh, <clears throat> uh, I mean, that's why you use a budget. Mm -hmm. I, I know, you know. I, I have a, you know, I, mean, I dealt with these before, you know, people want to set stuff in little pockets and they go you know, nuts with it. I think you could. Well, you could accrue. You could. We'll, we'll do what what other cities do. I mean, you could accrue a liability. If no, if cities don't approve for for liabilities, then we won't either. Uh, the the most important thing is, you know, your reports say they're on the basis of cash receipts and cash disbursements. Well, if you're accruing stuff. And you're not it's, a cash it's no longer cash receipts and cash disbursements. Yeah, that's right. It's an approval accounting system, not but if right. but a lot of times if you if you don't have that money set aside somehow, how do you justify paying a bill in the month of January? In the budget. It's in the budget form. I know it's it's been appropriated. The expense has been appropriated, and I guess. You got a budget for it for next year. But it kind of blows your mind with the theory of cash. Well, and that's where you get into places in governments and wherever they have money at the end of the year, they hurry up and pay bills, figure out what they can spend. If they don't have enough money, wait, pay for it in January. Uh, I seem to remember very recently that it was you that said that um, that we that cities are supposed to capitalize assets and depreciate. Them. Not a soul. <laughs> it's just us and BJ. Yeah, yeah. Yes, but I'm not sure how that gets into their financial statements under new rules. Because that would be the municipal That's not a cash system. Municipal, municipal accounting, you, 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 you expense things when you buy it. Mm -hmm. it. It's not like a business where you buy a truck and you capitalize it and then you depreciate it on a monthly basis. And, and, and I agree with the exception that I thought I just heard recently somebody say that um, the municipal league or somebody was advising that that um, cities are supposed to capitalize. Uh, we were talking about you know expenses under five thousand dollars and what's capital and what's mm -hmm. yeah. what's not. I mean, what difference does it make if it's capital if it's a capital expense if you're not going to Depreciated. Well, they well, were talking the, about having an asset management is, think system. Accounting-wise, so if you want to capitalize it and show it as an asset, then it's not an expense, so then it's not in your expenses. Yeah. 
Right. Can't be both places. The depreciation expense is not the yeah. not the cash flow from right. making the expenditure. Uh, and I know some governments come up with memo accounting for depreciation. Uh, just to show, try to show the recruiting uh, the expense of operating. You know, I, at, at the arsenal, we, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's governmental, and they did have. They made them come up with a quad, you know, I'd just say a memo entry for depreciation so that if you were bidding a contract or something, you know, that it was featured in to show that whether you were really operating on that. Your cost of operating in relation to a real uh, commercial business. Well, I could see something like what the district does. Say after we initially get our assets, then you, you could set up an improvement reserve or capital asset reserve. And if you want to depreciate stuff, you could have funded depreciation and transfer and show depreciation as an expense and put an equal amount of money into a reserve account right, right. and then down the road when you have to replace those assets and you take the money out of the I, I did reserve. That for, I did that for the district that's how they had their equipment reserve account and they, you know, they kind of messed it up as we went along with the original because they wouldn't buy new equipment because they didn't want to take that hit year so they went set that up where you're depreciating it on a whatever 10 year basis or something like that and the expense to, you know the depreciation of the expense that it went into a reserve to the reserve account so when you bought a new truck it came out of the reserve account rather than hitting your term operating so you had a, you know you had a steady because the one on the board boy they were it looked like a chunk yard moving around out there. <laughs> can you find out? Can you get like a copy I'll of see if, see if, see if, what I can find? Yeah, what you're talking about. I would yeah. like to see an, uh, a copy of some pound hour size, their audited financial statements, uh, just to see exactly how they do things. Because it, it just. But, yeah. The, the other thing you talk about capitalizing stuff is you, you, that's when you have to take, keep formal accounting record or records of what property you own. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it's yeah, I, I don't want to make this any more complicated than it needs to be, but by the same token, in fact, I've, you know, I've, when I was on the board of commissioners, I argued that the district worried too much about depreciation, that they should be worried about cash flow. That's really the only thing that makes any difference is cash flow. Well, that because good. you don't pay any taxes, so you don't have to recognize depreciation right. as, well, a, as an only, expense. The only problem but, is they would, they would bite the bullet every time when it came to you into the year or started getting the budget. And they wanted to buy so oh we can't we don't want to put that kid in there because they wouldn't buy it. And that's what you know that worked most of the time. Now, my com my comment was gonna be how complicated do we want to make this? <laughs> no, so I want to I want to see the money sitting in the bank. If we save eight hundred and thirty-three dollars a month toward a bill in February, I'd like to see it in an account. So I can I can see the number. There's a number to cover that expense we're going to put in February budget next year. It's already there. We we set it aside all year long because we had court well, cases. When we get to the point, I can, in one of these webinars, one of the court things, so a clerk commented that at one time they had twenty bank accounts. Well, it doesn't have to be so a bank account. Twenty bank accounts, and then. And said, now we 
they were talking about eliminating, that's not, that's getting not rid using, of all of this stuff. They said now we're down to six. Right, but it doesn't have to be a bank account to set aside that money. It just has to be in a fund, right? On the statement, you transfer it. You make a general it journal be done, entry. But to, then you have to go through and figure out how to make entries to get these transfers. Okay. Made. Okay. It's not necessary. You know, that's what you're not you're not relying on your budget. Okay. Okay. Right. The governing document is the budget. Okay. So what would this budget look like when we don't expect to spend ten thousand dollars in twenty twenty two? Zero, right? Right. And then next year we'll have the twenty the ten thousand on it. But where's the money gonna come from in February next well, year? If it's in the budget this year yeah. and you don't spend it, that means you got ten thousand dollars more left in your balance. A moment ago you told me the budget would be zero this year for twenty two. Because we don't expect to spend no, anything. We've in got ten thousand dollars in there. That's my that was my question. How do I know that it's gonna be there because I didn't spend it? So how does it carry forward? So is there a balance forward at the beginning of the year? Yeah. Look at, look at this budget. That would explain We've it. We've got 111,967 carrying forward from okay. 2021. Okay. Because we right. haven't spent. Okay. We just have to remember that 10 grand is set aside for an expense in February. Mm -hmm. We don't even have the invoice. As long as we budget. Now, if we don't put it in the budget. Well, then you then put that expense in February of right. next year. Next year, yeah. right. well, next year, when we make the budget, we do a budget $10,000. Except you're yeah. going to have all kinds of other right. expenses in right. January now, and February, too. Now, if you don't put that 10000 in the budget next year and spend it for something else. Right. Then it's not going to be there. I understand. I mean, so it's take... the same problem we have looking at this budget. There's hundred eleven thousand dollars left in the twenty two budget. Mm -hmm. How come? Nobody knows why. Well, you have to go back to that budget and see where we didn't spend it. Right. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Or we did. Uh, we budgeted the surplus because we figured. We needed to have something left. Actually, the beginning balance will be 61 9. Yeah, the, the, um, maybe the eventual actual accounting system, not my spreadsheet, but the actual accounting spreadsheet will show a carryover balance of $100,000 or $10,000. Mm -hmm. And so instead of just having one carryover number of 111,000, sure. you have all of these carryover numbers that add up to $100,000. year will show that you had $10,000 left in, in that account or that deadline. <coughs> if it does that, I'm fine with that. In district court. Yeah, I think if we, if we put our budget together, or maybe our accounting system together, not just the budget, uh, well, you know that each each yeah. line item, or at least every, uh, it doesn't have to be broke down. And yeah, each yeah. department at least has a carryover yeah. down. I'm thinking, you know, probably say with district court, we need to set up district court as a fund, so it would not be. Why? It wouldn't be part of the general fund budget. It would have its own statement. You could have a combined statement with everything shown thrown together. But it's just like you can have a fund for the police department. You can have a fund for the fire department. You know, and there would be a separate statement for each one. We can do it that, that way. Why? And then you'd have and then under this system, then you would have a combined statement where everything's added together. I don't know if it would have to be a fund. It would have to be a, you know, a department number could work Same just thing. as well. It wouldn't be that line item. And I'm not forward. saying that they have to be a separate bank account. Right. Uh, it would be a, a separate have, department. You have department sounds. Good. We have not Whatever designation you call it in the software. Just we have set up okay. departments. Yeah. Funds would equal the bank accounts. Yeah. Departments could equal the divisions. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
Yeah, I think that's the way to do it. Have, have department numbers, have, have all of the primary categories assigned department numbers, and you know that that department would have a carryover balance, and all those carryover balances would then would add up to the total mm -hmm. carryover. Just like we had departments that. under you as a mayor, right? Right. That way, we wouldn't be able to look at a number of one hundred and eleven thousand and say, "You know, we're rich. Let's spend it on this." Right. Well, you're going to have a statement that's going to show one hundred and eleven thousand. That's fine, but we can see the detail where it came from very easily by looking at a department report. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It'll, it'll make the line items much easier to interpret, and it makes it more accountable. You know, more visible, more transparent to everybody else. So that someone says, like, you know, I can't figure out their budget. Well, if they have the department reports, it helps figure out the budget. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and the other thing it would do is if we get to the end of the year and we decide we want to do, like, I'm going to ask to be done this year, take $50,000 and set it up in a reserve account, you know, if I suggest that next year, you guys would have to say, okay, what department is it going to come out of? What department has a positive balance and they're not going to need to carry it over so we can move it into the reserve account? You might pull it out of multiple departments. Yes, right. Mm -hmm. More than likely you will. Yeah. Especially someday when we have department heads. When we get rich. We're long been married. We will be. You know, there'll be one department for administrating. And everything else will have to go into something else. Mm -hmm. All right, so that's my story on district court. Okay. And uh, I hope to have better numbers by the time we actually uh, um, finalize the budget and, and vote on approving the budget. Fire department is. Uh, is you know that's the interlocal agreement so that's locked in sheriff's contract i have sixty-five thousand four hundred. it sounds like it would be enough for two deputies maybe but it's not and i'm anticipating that um that we're not going to get away with um, you know we've been paying forty thousand dollars a year for one deputy the district has, but that was back when the when the county was keeping all our money. Now the county is you know, paying us our you know our sales tax money. They're paying us our property tax money. And I assume they're going to. Um, they're probably going to want us to cover the full cost of having the deputy out here, which is uh, salary. Um, vehicle expense um, and and the fringe benefits so it's not just the deputy salary but the fringe benefits the insurance cost and the vehicle cost cost of equipment in the vehicle and stuff like that so that number is my estimate of the full cost of having a deputy if we were going to go out and buy a car, and that car would last five years and burn its number of gallons of gas and need so many sets of tires and stuff like that. But it's the price, it's the cost of one, one deputy. Right. Okay. Because you have a note that says second deputy plus vehicle expense. On my spreadsheet, it says second deputy plus vehicle. I think yeah, second deputy being the I said providing the first deputy. Okay, I, I think it just needs to say share of contract for one. Yeah, I, that okay. was my note. Okay. Well, where, where does that stand, man? Because, I mean, I mean they can, they're collecting that security fee, but they really can't enforce the law. I mean, we have to maintain the police department. If they want to pay for one, but it needs to be under the city umbrella. Think? We're not required to have a police department. The city of the second class is not required to have a police department. 
Yeah. We could. We could just. Well, no, we have, but we we do have to have police protection. We uh, we could appoint a marshal and say that that's good enough. That's to follow the the the, the um, basically the law says you have to elect a marshal. You have to elect a marshal. That's where you start. But then the next thing in the law says, but the city council can vote to appoint the marshal. And then the third option is they can have a, uh, a, a police department or a department of public safety. And, um, but, and, and when I checked with the municipal league, they said, Nobody has a marshal, mm -hmm. but there are several. There are several um, cities of the second class that have no police department and no contract with the sheriff. They just let the county do the patrolling, and they call it good enough. And you know, if you're you know a town like Beaver. Mm -hmm. All right. um, I, I guess I missed what I called the police department, uh, the sheriff's contract. I mean, it looks to me like we're acquiescing to, to high said, uh I mean, if they won't pay for a deputy, it ought to be under our umbrella. Why couldn't it be a contract between the three parties, high said, the city, and the sheriff? And all three parties sign off of it, and it specifically says, that high Sid pays this much, the city pays this much, and the and the sheriff provides the deputies. It seems seems like that would work just fine. Uh, I think I think a reason not to have it all under us would be we would have to be taking money from high Sid, and I'm not sure we want to do that. Yes. Because I think, according to maybe it was according to the lawsuit settlement, it's kind of what I'm they, thinking. They they agreed that it was okay for the district to collect a security fee and spend it on security, and it would probably or it might be um, difficult for them for the district to pay the city that money to go towards. A deputy and have us have the whole contract with the uh, county. I I I see this if if it happens that, that the city has one deputy pays for one deputy and the district pays for one deputy. I see that as a short term uh, situation because long term, realistically, we need more than two deputies out there. <laughs> Oh, you need five if you want to provide 24 7. <laughs> there are quite a few cities of the second class that have three a police department with three. And um, we're going to have to do some scrambling to get money to pay for it, though. Well, that's why I say that you know, this, this is a bridge to a, another plan, yeah. and uh, we'll have to see where the funds come from. For that other plan. But I'm getting, uh, I, there's, there's a lot more, there are a lot more problems out here associated with crime, traffic control, and things like that than there are with code enforcement. And if I had to choose between more deputies and code enforcement, I put code enforcement on that word because that garbage bag in somebody's front yard isn't breaking into a little old lady house. There was an incident just recently on Facebook where somebody, and I believe that it was, I, I've heard that at least that it's tied to that rehab place up in the park, that their idea of Somebody doesn't, if one of their clients breaks the rule, they sever ties with that client. 
And I heard, and I don't have any confirmation of this, but that means they just put them out on the street. Um, no, that's absolutely true. I mean, and um, yeah, I, I don't want to say that that's where this gentleman came from because I don't know that. But um, there was a gentleman, young man, uh, wandering around up on. Um, by up there by Lynn's area. Yeah, well, that was a different one. That, yeah, I was, that was the one I was thinking recently. of. Oh, yeah. So, so I recall, I recall seeing. I thought it was up by more up by the, the point of well, uh, Anyway. Oh, yeah, there was, it's been there two was separate some, separate, separate some skinny young guy um, wandering up and down the streets, came up on somebody's porch, was looking in their window. They called the cops. Um, but then somehow he ended up back there again. And they yeah. said, if it happens one more time, they'll take him to jail. But it was one of those things where he hadn't technically broken any laws. And so there wasn't much they could do. But you had that situation, you had the situation up in your neighborhood where there was a similar uh, young man, obviously under the influence of something pounding on this lady's window in the middle of the night and she called the cops and they called him off and uh, so there's more and more and more of that kind of stuff going there's on. been three or four posts that people have in their uh, catalytic, catalytic converters stolen yeah mm -hmm. cars parked in the yard and stuff the mm -hmm. driver yeah but anyway i you know i Going forward, we're going to have to, we're going to need more police coverage than less. And uh, we'll have to figure out how to pay for that. But if the district can hire a deputy for this year yet, for this coming year, and the city can add a deputy, at least we'd have twice the coverage that we have now. Are you and Danny on the same page with the amount you're both putting in the budgets? I don't, I, have, I don't know that Damien has gotten to the point of a budget number yet, but I, I wouldn't, you know, I'm not going to throw that number to, I'm not going to offer that to the sheriff, you know, Danny and I are supposed to go over there and talk to the sheriff. Okay. We'll, we'll see yeah, this is going. just your early number, it, I guess. It is, it is my, my early number, but I think it was when you and I came over there and helped. To, to the sheriff before incorporation even, um, and it was Sheriff Ross and one of his lieutenants. Uh, so, they so had how, already started talking about it then. So how would that work, them hiring one, us hiring one? Don't know that yet. That's why Danny and I have to go over there and talk to him. It could be one contract. Well, I'm just going about when this was first rose that had the roads that ambush meeting that they just come to. Uh, you know, the, some of us were told that that you know they're going to they're going to hire a deputy and it's going to be Aaron and you know good luck finding somebody. Uh, I mean, I, I didn't have a good feeling about that. Still don't, but I trust them. Well, it would be up to the county to hire somebody and to buy another vehicle. And, uh, you know, that's why I think it's going to be a little more difficult this time around. Well, I just, I just didn't want Danny it. plugging 40000 or something, whatever they're paying now, 48000 into his budget if we're thinking it's going to be higher and he doesn't know it, so. Now, Danny and I have thought. Okay. The thought that I had is, have we investigated what it might cost for Eureka to come over and provide police service for us? No. Okay. But we do, we do have to have, if we're going to have district court, we do have to have a police department, which is why Justin drafted the ordinance that we're going to be discussing tomorrow, um, establishing a police department with no employees, and the staffing of the police department will be done through contract with the county. Oh, it'll be the county jail, in other words, sort of? 
we would use the county jail? We would, so to we speak. Would have, we would have a contract for a deputy or two deputies or however many deputies we end up with. But he said that's uh, that was his suggestion as to how to meet, how to meet the intent of the law for having a district court. Do any of the violations that the city would have an ordinance for, are any of those misdemeanors? Mm -hmm. So you have to get arraigned and you have to go to jail and get photographed and stuff like that when that happens, don't you? Or am I wrong? I, I don't know about all of that, but, um, but there, are, there are some code enforcement um, citations it could be mis misdemeanors. Hmm. I, I, yeah, I just don't know enough about it. So I just wondered. You know, that, you know, tying that back into code enforcement, one of the reasons why I backed off on the cost of the code enforcement officer and the building inspector was because originally I was under the impression that code enforcement officer, in order to be able to write citations, if letters and talking nice to people don't work and it results in writing a citation that the code enforcement officer would have to be a sworn officer and that is true if if he's going to he or she is going to write the citation but um in forest in green forest um, if it comes to that point then david orr gets with uh, the uh, police department and the police write the citation and deliver it. So, um, so the code enforcement officer does not have to be uh, a sworn officer because the deputy can, in fact, write the citation and, and uh, serve it. So, um, but again, you know, that, that would be. If we only had one deputy here, that would be one more thing that our one deputy would have to do. Well, back to Lynn's comment, I could see if we worked with Eureka Springs, they're only five, six, seven miles away. If something comes up versus 75% of the time when we don't have a deputy, Having to bring somebody 30 or 35 miles to get here. That's something I mean, we, it would definitely be worth pursuing. You know, I don't think there's time to pursue it for this coming year, but it would definitely be worth pursuing going forward. I, I really do think that that's how there's one, there's one small city that is basically inside of Little Rock. If you look at the city limits of Western Little Rock, you know, inside of landlocked inside of Little Rock, there's a little city, and uh, and I don't believe they have a police department. And there's also a little city north north, but almost connected to Searcy, and they don't have a police department. And I'm guessing that that's what they do because they're they're connected, you know, land-wise. You don't know that you're leaving one city and going into another, other than maybe the street signs change colors. So the, uh, the bigger city just uh, ball with going. I would think uh, one of the difficulties we would have working with Eureka Springs handling calls out here, unless they were si assigned permanently uh, particular days or hours or something. It, I, it, probably wouldn't be any better than using the county because Eureka Springs crimes happen at night because of all the bars and stuff like that and the, the drunks and traffic accidents and what have you uh, and weekend and I think nights are, are our largest problem out here. Just some thoughts. <laughs> I brought it up because I think I read someplace they have 18 enforcement officers. Mm -hmm. so, 
I can't tell you. It's a big budget. And this, you know, this is the number that you can choke on. In 2013, uh, Horseshoe Bend had their own police department, and they decided to enter into a contract with the sheriff. I believe it's Israel County down there. They and I have a copy of their initial contract, the first one they wrote. They gave the county all of their equipment, all of their cars, everything that they had for their police department, and $250,000 for the first year um, coverage, police protection. And they considered that a bargain. Running the police department was more than a third of their city budget. And of course, down there, they have they, they have a, a municipal recreational improvement district running the amenities. But other than that, the city has everything. So and there isn't much there. I mean, no, it's not to degrade but it, but there isn't much there. Population-wise, they're, they're the same size we are. And they were a suburban improvement. District. Few years ahead of us, as far as I, well, coming into a city. I'll tell you, um, I mean, uh, Bella Vista went crazy with their city services and their salaries and everything else. It blows your mind how much they spend. Well, Cherokee Village, I think, like six or eight full-time. And, and when I was talking, I talked one day to, I think, the, the clerk maybe down in Huntsville. Or someone down in Huntsville in the city, and they 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 have a huge police department in Huntsville, and their population isn't that much bigger than us. Yeah, I don't know if it being the county seat gives them access to revenue. They do have a Walmart. Yeah, there's <laughs> there's nothing else. There's no other towns in the county, hardly. <laughs> every every city around here has a Walmart. At least. 3% city sales tax yeah, yeah. to pay for all that. Stuff. You bet. That's what does if it. If you have a 3% city sales tax and a Walmart, mm -hmm. you're good. You're in good shape. Yeah. But when you see the size of this, these city police departments for these smaller towns sometimes, when you're thinking, oh my God, how do they do it? I don't know how they do it. But it's the sales tax that is. So, anyway, again, we got to move on. Budget, we need to have the uh, sheriff contract thing yep. nailed down. Um, until that happens. When are you supposed to talk with them? I don't know. I got Danny, Danny and I have to nail that down. Okay, uh, I don't know how they do it, but Hot Spring Village has their own police department. Oh, their POA. And, but all their policemen are deputized by the county. Hmm. So, They're county deputies too. Yeah, that population down here is like 15 to 20,000 people. But, so it, you know, it, it probably is cheaper than, you know, actually having their own. The only advantage I can see is that if, you know, if we go with the sheriff, there's, there's some other things that come with the fact that it's their deputies, you know, we have, I mean, you got CID type people, or you got, you got access to the jail, and you, you got backup, or if we go by ourselves, you don't have, you don't have. We got to have to have at least 24 hour prisoner um, housing, we have to have dispatch, I mean, it, it's an expensive proposition. And quite frankly, I'm not sure why every small town doesn't just contract with the county and make sure that you have plenty of deputies to go around. And you know why well, any? The only, why any? Uh, the city only town. problem we have with, with contracting with the county is, and they, and that's what they did when I was on the board, when we had the two deputies. They did not give those people. You know, they did not give the sheriff. Two additional slots, you know, the, the, the JPs. They did that. So 
they were having to take the two that came out here out of their allocation that's right. as if they didn't have the contract. And that's not right. It's not right. No. Uh, they should, they should. Uh, and if the county has a deputy for the county island, the, the, the JPs, the quorum courts are going to have to approve that. Right. And they won't, they won't do it. Well, if we're paying for all this, they better they better be people they aren't considering uh, working anywhere else. I mean, that's that's a, that's a problem. That, you know, they went through all the time staffing. Um, this current <coughs> sheriff seems to be doing it adequate. You know, he has, you know, he has put Aaron out here, and he's been here all the time. He, is he running for re-election? No. Different Aaron. No, oh, you mean the sheriff? Sheriff, sheriff Ross Miller is not running. Yeah. But supposedly his deputy is right hand man for sure. Yeah. But uh, it, it, and we'll get a new sheriff every two years. It's four now. Then I put in uh, I put in six thousand dollars for planning and zoning. Mm -hmm. um, I don't really anticipate a lot of expense there, but we, we may. I don't know. The, the biggest expense I see coming is uh, if we're required to, to do publications in newspapers about any zoning variance hearings. Mm -hmm. you, know, you have to publish hearings if there's going to be a subdivision that's reviewed, but it's the variances. If anybody wants to come and have a uh, a conditional use permit, everything I've read, it has to be published. And those articles in the Gazette, they're $250 to $400 to do this much printing. Jerry said that he thought maybe those were dictated by some statute because they're some sort of public notice. I haven't dug into that to see. But, you know, 250 bucks for four inches to announce a meeting, you're going to talk about someone wants to uh, vacate uh, Drainage ditch. So why would we want to put a public notice in the Arkansas Democrat? That, that's the paper I'm clipping from. And they're 250 to 400 bucks. Can't we post it on our city board? I don't know. I don't know what okay. don't know I, the statutes I'm reading says you have to have hearings, 15 days notice published in a newspaper. So they're yeah, specific. Also put it in the, put it in the ESI or the Carroll County News. Put it in the Carroll County News. Yeah. And whoever is requesting the variance could, you know, we could charge them for it. Hey, for that's it. an and idea. And, and that's one of the one of the uh, statutes or one of the uh, codes I was reading. They have all kinds of requests uh, for that. You know, you want a conditional use, 150 bucks. You want this, and I assume it is to cover publishing. Good uh, thought. And then in some of the uh, some of the things I've read. Uh, if uh, you want a conditional use, if I want a conditional use permit for my lot, I have to notify um, the neighboring lots with a letter, certified letter, and in some of them they have to put a sign on those lots that there's going to be a, a meeting that's going to be held on a certain day. So hmm. a sign is 50 bucks to have a sign printed, to stick it in the yard. So it depends on how far we go and have to go. I think that'll be our biggest ongoing expense and not knowing how much it is, but some of it's recoverable. In our fees. We'll just have to remember that when we write the ordinance. Yes, yeah, so then we have to. If, yeah, if you're going to apply for a conditional use permit, there's a fee associated. Mm -hmm. But you know, as far as uh, putting a, a tablet a computer in front of the under the fingertips, you know, eight hundred thousand dollars would buy a computer probably. <laughs> That's the kind of price range I'm looking at. Mm -hmm. Why do you chuckle? No, okay. <laughs> okay. Um, so my notes are uh, the uh, cost, the computer cost, the cost of having another computer for the, uh, the building inspector, code enforcement yeah. officer. Because he's going to have to create records, whether he uh, creates them electronically and saves them or prints them out and saves them in a file, records have to be kept. I don't know if we decided to capitalize uh, those PCs or, or what you've decided on that, but uh, just yeah. something out there I'll throw out. 
but that's just to buy the hardware. You know, if you're, you're, you'll have another license on your 365 and whatever else. Whatever we're paying monthly, we'll have to add a. Yeah, yeah, a bucket for that. A bucket for that too. And then we need to find out more about the uh, liability <coughs> insurance for an employee, um, whether that be auto insurance or liability for anything else that may be. Wrong or trouble that they might get in. And I mean, if, if the gun goes off when he's taken out of his holster and shoots himself in the foot, somebody's yeah. got to pay for it. Yeah, somebody said below before that yeah. Colin Paul died, but so did um, who was Barney's girlfriend? I'll give you the Thelma Lou. Thelma Lou died. <laughs> Jeez. Well, and uh, and then the uh, twenty five hundred dollars for uh, what was that? I well, was for advertising, but what was the specific thing? NATA, N A T A. And dues. Okay. And it was it was five hundred dollars from something else. <laughs> that was a five hundred. I, I wrote that down. Yeah. West side about five hundred dollars from some sort of advertising. What was that? The one that we tried, the cities, the four cities, the four city or four cities. Oh, the economic development. That was it. The 500? Economic Development Commission or something. Okay. That's not annual. I can't say that there might not be something else to say. Really? Is there any anticipated expense for this grant that uh, Jerry's working on? For do we have to contribute anything to that plan? Yeah, like I know in the grant to get the grant written, but. Going forward, he stood right there at the last meeting and said, "No, he's fine." Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Anything else? I so wish we had more money to spend. But yeah. When are we going to revisit this again? Uh, next month for sure. Oh, okay. No, before the next, before the November. Um, I suppose we could pick a date right now. Maybe. And just for uh, for transparency, can we create a line on here that it's called uh, city sales tax revenue and put zeros in it? And property tax revenue zero. Anything you know? So so in our budget it shows that we do not have a budget to collect five mil. We're not collecting the city sales oh, tax. Okay. And that does remind me that we have to pass an ordinance that says that's where not, you said that. Yeah, we're not going was to mentioning that. Property tax. So who wants to draft that ordinance? Men already drafted one that I kept forgetting. <laughs> Don't everybody volunteer? You want me to get one? I get a copy of one. All we do is change it to zero. Yeah. Should be able to find one from Marika and Barry. I'll find one of the many multiple people. <laughs> okay, let's see here. Start with Tony Town. That's the attorney that we use. Is it sales tax or property? Five mil property. I'm just, I, I was just looked on Tony Town's uh, city website. Damn, it's hard to find anything. I couldn't find the 2021 budget. Oh, I would say if you're looking for their rules, it, it's the municipal league and stuff, or their uh, muni code for Tony Town. I haven't looked for a budget on Tony Town, but I've got a lot of planning stuff from them. It's hard to find city budgets on, online. I, I have, I've had a real tough time. I'm gonna tell you what the the website that Linda put together is. Uh, it's People squeal here about transparency, but compared to other cities and stuff, 
I mean, we have so much information out there that they don't get any place else. I put a link at Jerry's request to, on the home page to that people can go there and take the survey even. That was a good idea. I didn't know I could do it, but I figured well, we had, <clears throat> used a little unused. We had a, look, we had a big brouhaha uh, put it on Holiday Island, Arkansas, and within 10 minutes it had turned into a, a, a call for a we don't need broadband, we need better streets. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Corruption, and that needs to be a federal and state audit, and uh, somebody yeah. go to jail. And anyway, I, I took it down. I took the comment, blocked the comments. Uh, how Do about uh, November 9th at 3 o'clock? Another budget workshop. That'll be fine. Well, hopefully by then I'll have answers on the district court and, sure. and the sheriff's contract. And, Three o'clock, you said? Yeah. On November 9th? Yeah, that's right. That's instead of CPC. According to oh, Michael. yeah. CPC. That would be the CPC meeting, wouldn't it? That Tuesday before. The second Tuesday. Second each Tuesday. Month. Yeah, that would be. That would be our uh, planning commission date. Oh. That's, that's yeah, a time time. Time. No, we have a three. three. Planning commission. We'll do this one an hour before, and then we'll do them both out of the same thing. That could work. Works for me. Two o'clock okay. the whole hour after. It ain't gonna take that long to look through it. Oh, I don't think you have to. Unless you just said you're gonna want to talk about it. I don't want to okay. get it done. You get it done, and I'll set it at two o'clock. And then the uh, CPC at three. So oh, it's a two? Two. And City budget the issues. It's a workshop again, right? Right. We're not going to, it's not a formal meeting to approve the budget. Right. It okay. has to be approved in a formal meeting. Oh. City budget workshop, two o'clock. Okay. <laughs> <coughs> Actually, the city council doesn't have to. I have to present a budget by December 1st. The city council doesn't have to approve it until February 1st. But that just means that we can't spend any money in January because we won't have an approved budget. Okay. Anything else? I'm good. Okay. We're adjourned. Okay. Is anybody on the Zoom? Just, just BJ. BJ. That, that was it. <laughs> Thank you, BJ. Uh, You're welcome. What was that? Can you confirm the date of the next meeting? Yeah, the next budget workshop is November 9th, 2 p.m. It'll be followed by the City Planning Commission meeting at 3, same day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, BJ. I'm going to turn it off now. Betcha.